and today I have two massive boxes of books that I am unhauling. These are books that, for whatever reason, maybe I liked the book, but I just don't think I'll ever reread it, or I got the book and it wasn't quite what I thought that I wanted. Some of these are books that I just flat out did not enjoy. And some of these are books that I got for my nieces and then I thought, they're not even gonna like that. Why would I give that to them? And so I'm passing them on to other children who might enjoy them. So the first one is Dante's Inferno. I actually have a nicer edition of this and so I'm getting rid of this paperback. I'm also getting rid of The Last of the Mohicans and The Deer Slayer. Um, I read Last of the Mohicans and it was okay. I mean, I'm glad that I read it, but I feel like it was just too violent and the writing style was sort of dry. It, it was all fine, but I just don't know if I wanna continue with the entire series of like seven or eight books. Um, so eh, getting rid of these, I might just read them on my Kindle. I mean, if I wanted to read more James Fenimore Cooper, I don't really care about having a physical copy. I'll just read it on my Kindle if I need to. I'm also getting rid of Deep Light. Now, I gave this book four stars and I really enjoyed it. However, I just don't see myself ever rereading it. If I ever did feel like rereading it, I think I'd probably just get it from the library. And so I don't feel like I need to keep it on my shelves. And I'm getting rid of A Year of Mindfulness for Beginners. This has some really weird, like voodoo, strange kind of stuff in it. And I was like, nope, don't need that in my life. No, thank you. Spark and the League of Ursus. This one had some plot problems. I think I ended up giving it like three stars or something. It was okay, but uh, just not my cup of tea. The Knight, the Harp, and the Maiden. This was one of my um, try a chapter books that I ended up not continuing with. So I read the first chapter and was like, nope. Wings of Flame. This was one of my try a chapter books that I did read and I enjoyed and I gave it three stars. But again, it's like, I'm just never gonna reread this. I don't really need to keep it around. The Rising Star of Rusty Nail. You would think, you know, this is about a pianist so you would think that I would love it, but I think I ended up giving it two or three stars. If I recall correctly, there were only like three scenes in this entire book that I actually liked. And so this is definitely not one I wanna keep on my shelves. The English Grammar Workbook for Adults. This is for um, people who are learning English as a second language, and I thought it was fantastic. English is my first language, but of course I'm also bilingual with Spanish. So just the way that they approached this was so smart and so so clever. Like they really get into the nitty gritty of, you know, syntax and grammar and um, like idioms and, you know, common pitfalls for people who are learning English for the first time. So being bilingual myself, I know those kind of pitfalls that you can fall into when you're learning another language. And some of these things I was like, oh yeah, English does that weird thing where we spell things that other way. And because I'm a native English speaker, it never occurred to me that that would be a problem for people who are not native English speakers. Anyway, this was just brilliant. So brilliant. If you are trying to learn English, get this book because it's amazing. But of course, I don't need it. <laughs> so I'm gonna pass it on to somebody who does. Dear Moon is a sweet little picture book that I really enjoyed. However, um, it's about a child who is battling cancer. So I thought, you know, I'm gonna pass this on to someone else. That might be really meaningful for them if their family is going through something like that. Florence and her fantastic family tree is about a child who comes from a mixed family. So she has step parents and step brothers and sisters. And you know, so she has a very complicated family tree. I, however, come from a simple family tree, um, so I'd, I'd rather pass this on to a child that this will be really meaningful for them to see their type of family tree represented in a book. No matter what, a foster care tale. So um, again, this is one that has a very specific you know, subject, and I'd like to pass it on to a child who actually has been through foster care or something, and that would be really meaningful for them, whereas for me, it doesn't really apply to my life. It's a wonderful book, but it would be better off in the hands of someone else. The Acadia Files book two, which is Autumn Science. This is a really cute sort of little novel that has snippets of um, scientific information in it. It's really adorable, but it's just not one that I particularly wanna keep. Forbidden Sea is about a mermaid. It's a really cool 
um, really imaginative mermaid story, but I just don't foresee that I'm ever really gonna reread this. So if I ever did wanna reread it, the library. The Silver Donkey. I have no recollection of what this is about. <laughs> if I can't remember it at all, it probably wasn't that amazing or memorable. <laughs> then I have a whole bunch of horse books because when I was a kid, I was obsessed with horses and somehow these came my way. I don't remember ever reading these, <laughs> um, but somehow they're on my shelves. Where did they come from? I don't know. Uh, we have the Summer Wish Prince, Winnie the Horse Gentler, The Wild Horse Running, and Magic Pony Carousel Flame. I don't think I ever read these. Like I, this one I remember a little, but I don't remember ever reading these. I literally have no clue where they came from. So out they go. Then I have some more like cutesy kind of first chapter type books that I have no clue where they came from. Somehow they appeared on my shelves. Did I buy them? I don't know. <laughs> did someone give them to me? Where did these come from? I have no clue. They've been in a box in an attic somewhere. I don't know. Uh, from the Files of Madison Finn, Fifth Grade Stars, Twin Trouble, and Star Reporter, Young Indiana Jones and the Plantation Treasure, Goliath and the Burglar, Jess and the Fireplug Caper. Now I do remember reading this one, The Misadventures of Benjamin Bartholomew Benjamin Bartholomew Biff. This is about a boy who um, misuses his birthday wish and gets more wishes and he messes up the balance of wishes in the world. And it sounds so cute and it's such a fun premise, but the writing, the execution of the plot just wasn't there, so. Mm. Then I actually have two copies of Bookish and the Beast. The publisher sent me an arc and then when the hardcover came out, they sent me this one, but I don't want to read this. They also sent me an arc of The Princess and the Fangirl and this is just, I don't read contemporary very often. I tried the first couple of chapters of these and it's just not my type of writing style. This is just not something I'm interested in. You would think that this would be like the perfect series for me. Cause I mean, it's books, you know, and it's fairy tale retelling type stuff. Um, this should be right up my alley. And I just didn't like it. I tried to read it and I just ended up mm, not for me, not for me, sorry. So the poor publishers, they sent me these to review and then I got back to them and said, I'm not gonna review it. I'm not even gonna read it. Um, I'm just not happy. Please stop sending these. <laughs> so these will go to someone else who will enjoy them. Uh, DC Comic Kids sent me Teen Titans Go to Camp. I really liked this. I think I gave it three or four stars. It's funny. It's hilarious. But I just don't think I really like want to keep it for any reason. Teen Titans are not my favorite superheroes. Like if it was Superman, oh, I would be keeping that for sure. But I don't feel like I want to collect these or anything. So off they go to someone who will appreciate them. Now Lois Lane is absolutely one of my favorite characters. And so I would have kept this one if I had enjoyed it, but I think I ended up giving it two stars. The plot was really weird. The characterization was just strange. Not my favorite. I'm also getting rid of Call to be Creative. This was a good book. It's well written. It has a lot of great inspirational things for how to be more creative and stuff. Um, but the writing style just wasn't quite for me. I felt like it was a little too cutesy or something. There's a lot of stories in here about like grandma's old furniture and taking the grandkids camping and stuff. And I was just like, okay, if I was maybe 30 years older, this would be a book for me. But as it is, I hope some lovely grandma finds this and enjoys it. Hidden Gems, The Quest for the Great Diamond is one that I'm getting rid of, but I did enjoy it. I think I gave it three stars. And the cool thing is the author sent it to me with these stickers and with a little baggie full of rocks. So they sent me these cool rocks because you know, it's all about gems, right? It's all about, you know, rocks and minerals and stuff. So I am making sure to keep all the goodies together with the book. So whoever gets it, uh, you know, whoever uh, it's, it's donated to, then they will get some goodies to go along with it. This is another one of those where I really enjoyed it, but it's not one that I want to keep on my shelves. This one I'm a little conflicted about. I really loved Room Marks. I think I gave it four stars. Um, 
And there is a second book in this series that I might want to that I might want to read. This one I'm kind of like, eh, eh. Do I keep it? Do I get rid of it? The ending was not what I wanted, and so I kind of feel like I was just disappointed in that, and now I'm just like, fine. You don't give me the ending I want. I'm getting rid of you. <laughs> so maybe I'm just mad at the book, and that's why I'm getting rid of it. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, this one, maybe I need to think about it a little more before I decide to get rid of it. I read Benjamin Franklin's uh, autobiography and other writings as part of Jane Austen July and really enjoyed it. I mean, it's such an interesting snippet of history and this very clever, you know, intelligent man um, who had such an impact on history. It was really interesting, but I'm never going to read it again. And do I really need to hang on to it? Not really. Same thing with Lady Catherine and the real Downton Abbey. I loved this. This was such a cool book. And even if you don't even care about Downton Abbey, this is just an amazing snippet of history that was just so readable and so exciting to read. However, I just, I don't really keep nonfiction. When I read nonfiction, it's usually from the library or I read it and then I just get rid of it. You know, I mean, I, I tend to keep my fiction books, but I don't have a very large shelf of books for nonfiction that I keep. So uh, I'll just get rid of it and let someone else enjoy it. Then we have Ursula Le Guin's The Telling. Um, this is a sci-fi book and there were some things in here that I just really rubbed me the wrong way and I ended up DNFing it. Usually I love her books, but this one was just not for me. And Down the Rabbit Hole. This is one of my try a chapter books that I tried reading through it. I got about a third of the way through maybe and DNF'd it because it was just messed up. There were a lot of weird things in this book that I just didn't agree with that seemed to me very immoral and that I didn't like. So, nope. Then I have The House of Happy Spirits, which is a children's book that talks about um, this architect and the weird, you know, colorful buildings that he would design. And on the back, there's actually a photo of his weird, wonderful building. Um, the thing is, the way that this is told is very just wacky. Um, it feels like a strange dream sequence where nothing really makes sense. And I like for things to make sense. So this was not one that I enjoyed. If you like weird and wacky dream sequence type books, you might enjoy it. Then I have a couple of atlases and an almanac from National Geographic. I originally got these because I thought, oh, I'll share these with my nieces someday. But my nieces are three years old and one year old. So I don't think they need the 2021 almanac, okay? Like, by the time they would be old enough for me to share this with them, it would be so outdated that, like, why did you get this for them? <laughs> But National Geographic Kids so kindly sent this for me to review. And so I was happy to just review it and just look through it for myself. Cause I mean, look, so cool. So much cool things and the stuff and the scientific information. I love it. <laughs> and I have the Beginners United States Atlas and the Student United States Atlas. And these can go to someone, some student who needs them this year, especially with all the homeschooling going on this year. Somebody could really use this. And those are all the books that I am unhauling. Wow. Please leave me a comment down below and let me know what are some books that you're getting rid of. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and remember the right book in the right hands at the right time can change the world.